Tonight on Panther Sports, we talk with HPU basketball player Alan Chaney about his road to recovery and return to basketball. Later, we look at one athlete's transition from football to baseball. All this and more coming up on Panther Sports. week's edition of Panther Sports. I'm Colin Smith. Let's get things started with the Leaky Roundup. I'm Brian Brennan. And this is your Panther Sports Weekly Roundup. Let's kick things off with women's soccer. On Thursday, HBU would face Presbyterian College. Jackie Kessler started the scoring with this shot in the 20th minute, then broke the game open with another one in the second half. This was the first time in Kessler's two-year career at High Point that she scored two goals in one game. Uh, really pleased with her performance tonight, uh, especially in the first half and the beginning of the second half. I thought we were fantastic. Um, I like the fact that we're creating some great chances. We High Point would welcome the UNC Asheville Bulldogs only two days later. After HPU gave up a goal in the first 10 minutes of the game, Danielle Shepler scored a goal. Then another. And yet another all within a seven minute span to earn a hat trick. To come out and score three goals, it was pretty awesome. And it was just like awesome, like the support from like the bench, they were like all screaming for me and my teammates were just so happy and just made it so much more special. Moving on to men's soccer, where the 23rd ranked Panthers visited Rock Hill, South Carolina for a Saturday night showdown with Winthrop University. Sean Sloan struck first for the Panthers with a shot off a free kick from just outside the 18 yard box. Sloan finished the game with four shots, trailing only to Mamdi Nippon, who of his six shots put four on goal and one in the back of the net in the 54th minute. On Tuesday, the Panthers hit the road again to take on the University of Virginia. Sloan opened the scoring from just outside the 18-yard box as Panther fans who traveled to UVA cheered him on. However, Virginia would creep back into the game with a goal of their own on a free kick just outside the box. UVA clinched the game in the final minutes after being awarded and converting a penalty kick. That gave the Panthers their first loss of the season, dropping them to 10-1-1. The HPU volleyball team played two conference games on the road last weekend, taking on Radford Friday night and Liberty on Saturday afternoon. High Point trailed early against Radford, but battled back from an eight-point deficit to win set one, 25-23. The Panthers gave up set two, but pulled away after the mid-match break to take sets three and four to earn the 3-1 victory. The following day was tough for the Panthers when they took on Liberty, who are currently tied for first in the conference standings. High Point kept it close in the first set, and at one point were tied with Liberty 11-11, but couldn't quite catch the Flames as they pulled ahead by scoring four of the next five points. HPU only trailed by one late in the set, but couldn't stop the Flames from winning it 25-22. After that, the Panthers could never hit the 20-point mark dropping the final two sets and getting swept by the Flames 3 to nothing. Finally, the men's and women's lacrosse teams continued their offseason last weekend. The women hosted seven schools and played three of them on Sunday in their play day, where teams will gather and play in hour-long games. Though score is not kept, teams use it to test their strategies in game situations to better prepare for the upcoming spring season. Coach Boswell used her games to give her freshmen their first taste of NCAA action. I think the most important part about the play days right now is getting the freshmen on the field and just getting them some game time experience. The men's lacrosse team took on Marquette and Colgate on Saturday. Coach Torpy said although the team still has work to do, he was impressed with the group's effort. Felt like the guys played a little inconsistent to start. As the day went on, they got better. I uh, thought the effort was there from the get-go. This has been the Weekly Roundup. Earlier this week, I spoke with basketball player Alan Chaney about his basketball career and his journey to High Point University. Hey, Alan, it's great to have you today here with us. Um, first of all, we're going to kind of start off with if you can I understand you went to schools before this one. If you can mm -hmm. kind of just walk me through what exactly you did. Yeah, um, I attended two universities before I came here to High Point. Um, my first year, my freshman year, I attended the University of Florida. I received a scholarship there. Uh, you know, I had a had an okay season, not anything great or anything to remember. But in the beginning of the season, I played pretty good. Started two games, and then at the end of the season, middle end kind of like reeled off. Didn't play as many minutes and had a little injury that hindered me from, you know, competing at the end. But um, 
after the season, I decided that I would transfer and I went to Virginia Tech and um, I got to Virginia Tech, had a great off season, got a whole lot better. And uh, then after that first year, uh, after my set out year, I go into the season, the 2010 season, knowing I could play and I was working out and then all of a sudden I had a, you know, I had, a, had an injury that was real significant that that really uh, took me out of the game for a while. All right, um, and what exactly was that? Um, I had a, a heart virus, uh, myocarditis. It is it's like a one in a million chance that you can get it. The doctors explained to me, and uh, I actually had like a just a regular cold. I got sick, and my body couldn't fight it off. And it caused me to have myocarditis, and the myocarditis caused scar tissue, which was like the huge problem. And um, you know, it caused me to have a, a, a passing out episode of where, you know, I, I didn't even have any symptoms of me having it. I didn't feel sluggish. I didn't feel weak or anything like that. So I went into my workout just just as regular as I can be, and I got towards the end of it, and then that's when you know, it hit me. Well, after you got that news, um, and then you weren't able to play, like, what was the hardest thing about that? Be told, like, hey, you know, you, you can't be playing right now. Uh, it, it killed me. Like, I didn't, it took a while for me to accept it, that, you know, it would take time for me to get back on the court. And um, what hurt most was having to go to practice and having to go to individual workouts or weights and, not being able to go through that struggle with my teammates and um, just knowing how hard I've worked to get to that point, especially leaving Florida and, and with a sense of wanting to do a lot better and knowing how to do a lot better, it, uh, it, it killed me just to have to sit out like that. Kind of tell me about your journey here. You know, I knew I wanted to be closer to home if possible. Uh, my doctor's in Philadelphia, so I was you know, I kind of hope to be in Philadelphia, any one of those universities, if I could. But um, it took a lot to actually get me into school as far as like my medical records and everything. So that that was one piece of it. I had to go through that. But um, as far as high point goes, I was I was at home. I received a call from Coach Dorsett and uh, he just explained to me that he thought that this would be a good situation for me. And he talked highly about the university and how, you know, he moved his family here and everything. And um, then I, I spoke with Coach Cherry and, uh, you know, he basically said the same thing. He told me that, you know, he wanted me to come in and, you know, be ready to play. And he was, he was gonna be excited if I, you know, even just gave it a look. So, you know, I came down, gave it a look and the university is like top notch. I've never been anything like this in my life. Now, since we're at High Point, what do you what do you feel about this team right now? Like, where do you see them going, especially? Uh, uh, the first thing I would say, I I just talked to Coach Sherry probably about three days ago, and I explained to him that I, I've never been on a team where after you're done working out, everybody goes to the same place. It's like unbelievable. Like after we're done working out, you know, we work hard, we compete. But then we're all friends when we get off the court. But we actually show it by hanging with each other. And we go to the point, we play ping pong all the time. We play pool and we just eat together and then we all go back to our rooms. But I've never been a part of anything like that. So I really feel like as, as long as we keep it together and as long as we, we stick together and know how to uh, respond to adversity when it hits us, we'll be fine. Did you ever think you'd ever play? Uh, on another team again at all, or what is, what's your feeling there? Yeah, there was no doubt in my mind that I would play again. Yeah, I, I never had that doubt inside of me. So I, I didn't really worry about that. So um, it was, it's, it's a whole different feeling. I'm even just excited to play in the scrimmages. I'm ready for that. And uh, just, you know, November 3rd is the exhibition game. I'm excited for that. So I'm, I'm gonna try to take a, a a positive approach and just be ready for every game, no matter if it's exhibition, scrimmage, or if it's a real game. So I'm excited. Yeah. All right, well, 
We are too, because we we can't wait to see you play and to see how well the team does. Appreciate it. Um, it was great to have you in the studio today. Um, thanks for coming, man. All right. Appreciate Thank it. You. All right. And we'll see you November 3rd. All right. Coming up, we'll see how the student athlete made it from the gridiron to the baseball diamond. HPU's baseball, Adam Berry, really knows his sports. He's already played two. Lene Frazier has the story. The cleats are on, the helmets are tight, and the next player is up to bat. Ah, uh, it must be time for a nice game of football? Well, yes, actually. For Adam Berry, that was exactly the case. Berry was picked up at quarterback for the University of Wyoming in 2008. He planned on starting, but was switched his second year to linebacker and to third on the depth chart. Barry transferred to Ventura College his junior year to give football another shot. But this is where he ended up putting down the pigskin for good. Um, it was probably the middle of the season. Um, I, I was only playing baseball at Ventura to just kind of pass the time until football season came around. Um, that's, that's why I picked Ventura as more for the football side of it and end up, end up playing baseball. And that's when kind of started talking to some people, and that's when they said, hey, you know, you should probably stick with baseball, and kind of made up my mind halfway through, and that's when, you know, started really looking at other colleges for baseball, so. This will be his first and last year playing for the Panthers, coming off two more seasons at California State North Ridge. It also hasn't been too hard of a transition for his new team. His fellow players recently picked him as team captain. Head coach Craig Cozart said it's been great having Barry on the team. Well, part of what the reason that uh, our players chose him because of his work ethic. Uh, he's come to this program and uh, really developed a nice relationship with most of the players and uh, gets them out to get extra workouts, gets them out on off days, and they hit and work out on the field. And uh, he just sets a tremendous example as far as the type of desire uh, and the mentality that we want on this team. Barry also sets a great example off the field. He helps build houses in Mexico with his aunt and uncle through their Build a Miracle program. He traveled down there this past spring. It's been a long time coming, but Barry's decided baseball is where he wants to be. He still misses football, though, just a little. Uh, it was tough. You know, it, it took a while to, um, I guess, to get over more mentally, physically, emotionally, because um, that is definitely watching football games nowadays. I still get, kind of get that urge, like I wish I was still out there. Um, but, I mean, it's still there. I still, you know, obviously wish I could could be playing football to an extent, um, but totally, totally happy playing baseball. This has been Lene Frazier for Panther Sports. Coming up after the commercial, we we'll send our very own Kyle Connolly out to the soccer pitch to learn what it really takes to be a Division I goalkeeper. With the men's soccer team seeing great success this season, we wonder if one of our Panther Sports production staffers could hold his own on the pitch. Let's see how Kyle does in his new segment called Kyle Learn Sports. Goalie, goalkeeper, keeper. The guy in the net who stops other team from scoring. All of these describe the player whose special role it is on the soccer team to stop the ball from entering the goal. On this week's edition of Panther Sports, we head out of the studio and onto the pitch to learn just what it takes to be a Division I goalie. I'm Kyle Connolly here for Panther Sports, and I'm going to learn how to be a D1 goalie. We enlisted the help of the men's soccer team at High Point University to show Kyle the ropes and to provide a challenge. I'm Patrick Donahue, a senior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Keith Cadry, a senior from Silver Spring, Maryland. I'm Marty Stern, and I'm a senior from Morristown, Tennessee. I'm Ryan Hankey, senior from Loveland, Ohio. After watching his personal coach, goalkeeper Ryan Hankey, in practice and getting a few hands-on tips, it was time for Kyle to hit the goal to see what he had. Despite his early success, the reality of who exactly his opponents were quickly set in for Kyle. 
Some, it may have even appeared like the Panthers were teaming up against our new goalkeeper. We caught up with Kyle afterwards to hear his thoughts on goalkeeping. Uh, it's hard. Number two, um, turf is not uh, friendly at all, as you can tell by the scratches and my knees. And number three, it's hard. Lastly, we'll take a look into the history of one of the most overlooked teams at HPU, or rather, the team behind the team. Though they may not be out on the court making baskets or on the field throwing touchdowns, college games are incomplete without them. Cheerleaders have been an integral part of college athletics since the late 1800s. At High Point, the squad cheers at all men's and women's home basketball games and also performs in regional and national competitions. But something most people don't know about the squad is that it's co-ed. On the bottom of the pyramids, underneath the pom-poms, ponytails, and hair bows, is something most people don't immediately associate with cheerleading. Boys. And former HPU cheerleader Michael Craig says cheerleading isn't as girly as you think. All you do, you're heavy lifting all the time. It's a lot of workout. It's a lot of hours. It's a lot of exercise. It's, it's just very physically demanding. It's probably the hardest six, sport seven, I've ever eight. done. One, two, three, four, Though this five, year six, there are no seven, men on High Point University's cheerleading team, one, two, three, men have played an integral role in our cheer squad since the 1920s. Let's take a step back and see where it all started. Men have been a staple of HPU cheerleading for longer than you may think. As early as 1927, men are mentioned in the college yearbooks as cheerleaders for the school. Women aren't mentioned until 1931. The first cohesive cheerleading team at High Point, then known as High Point College, was formed in 1936. The team was elected by the student body and included two men and two women. In fact, the High Point cheerleading team has included men more years than it has been comprised solely of women. Between 1927 and 2011, men were present on the team for 46 of those years. In 2001, High Point even had a separate men's cheerleading team. These days, cheerleading is considered primarily a female sport. You might think that being a male cheerleader might subject one to ridicule and teasing from peers, but Craig says that that really isn't the case. Craig notes that he too went into the sport with misconceptions about the time, effort, and athleticism required, but also that he gained something he never expected to. My favorite part would have to be just the sense of, like, teamliness, I guess you could say. It was just like a family. Thanks for watching Panther Sports. I'm Colin Smith. We'll see you in two weeks.